and we are live hey what is up everyone tyler answer here back with another live stream whether you're watching this on twitch or maybe after the fact on youtube hey it is good to have you hanging out with me i apologize if you meant to join me last night where i live we had a crazy storm come through um the last i heard dumped almost five inches of rain on us in an hour had upwards of 80 mile per hour wind so i lost power and yesterday was just kind of a mess but hey i'm back Everyone's safe, my house is good, and we are back on stream. So what we are gonna begin working through today is the Exploiting AD Room on Try Hack Me. This is created by Amoeba Man, who was actually on my last stream teaching us how to set up our own AD hacking lab with Vagrant. So if you didn't watch that, you can catch it on my YouTube channel. I think Amoeba Man might even jump in and join us at some point in time today. For him, this is early, early morning where he lives. I'm gonna go get Twitch pulled up just to make sure everything is rocking. Hey, what up, D33X33? No idea how to say your name, so I apologize if that's not how you pronounce it. Um, for those of you watching that stream, if anything sounds off, looks off, go ahead and just holler at me. When we do this, we have so many different things that we're managing from OBS to Twitch to Discord to our actual virtual machine. So it is it is so easy to, to miss something. But hey, I'm gonna show you guys really from the beginning how to connect to this network and how to get everything set up. So this will be from beginning to end. No idea how far we'll make it tonight. I think I will do this for about two hours. And what I like to do is I like to work in 25 minute increments. So let me go ahead and share my screen with you. And on my other monitor, I'm gonna to go to set up my timer. We're gonna start working at 25 minutes and we'll take a five minute break after 25 minutes. So let's start. The timer has started. And so if you can see my screen, the way that we are gonna to navigate to this is if you go to try hack me, go ahead and log in. I believe this room is for subscribers only, but if you have not subscribed to try hack me, it is well worth your time, well worth your money. If you click learn on here, and if we scroll all the way down, there's networks down here. So uh, Nate actually streamed throwback. I, I think I did the first half, he did the second half. And I have streamed breaching AD, enumerating ADD, lateral movement and pivoting. And now we will begin exploiting AD. So if you miss any of those other rooms, if you go to my YouTube channel, I have each one of those um, completely done. We got created by Amoeba Man. Thank you, Amoeba Man, as usual. And so the first thing that we're gonna to have to do is download our access for this specific network. So if you open the little access tab, and you have to do this within your VM, you'll click networks over here because you're gonna use a different open VPN file than you normally do for Try Hack Me. And we'll download my configuration file there. We'll just hit save file. And see if it came up there, it did. So open VPN, Tenebrae 93, exploiting that. Got our VPN pulled up, set our new tab up, and let's go ahead and cd to our try hack me folder and make directory and we'll call this exploiting AD. Go there. Okay, let's rename this tab our terminal just to keep things clear. And I'm gonna go ahead and grab my other web browser right here. And I'll zoom in a little bit so you guys can see the text a little bit better. Looks like the network is running, so that is good. And let's go ahead and dive into it. And what I like to do as I do this is, I'm learning this right alongside of you. So I do not claim to be an expert. You will watch me make silly mistakes, especially on live stream. I feel like trying to manage all these things, think through it, talk through it at the same time, just puts my brain in a jumble. But we're gonna learn it together. And what I like to do is I read the text in its entirety. Um, often when I do rooms on my own, I skim through them and then I get stuck because I miss something. So we're gonna read through this in its entirety and work through the entire room. And what I always like to say, is the goal is not to go fast, the goal is to learn. So even when you do it yourself, I encourage you to slow down, learn, and take in the content so that you learn something. So let's go ahead and dive in. Introduction. This network is the continuation of the Breaching AD and Anubrain AD networks. Please make sure to complete these networks before continuing with this one, which we did. Also note that we will discuss AD objects extensively. If you need a refresher, have a quick reskim of this room, that's the Active Directory Basics, I do encourage you to check that out. I think when I was first getting into stuff, I finished that room, we'll, we'll just check. Keep me honest, did I finish it? I did, yep. So you can see I did this room back in the day. 
Now that we have breached AD and enumerated the structure of the domains, we will explore different methods that could be used to exploit misconfigurations that may have surfaced from our enumeration. So AD exploitation. Now that we've performed our internal recon and understand the lay of the land regarding the AD structure and environment, it is time for the exploitation phase. This phase exploits misconfigurations to perform a combination of lateral movement and privilege escalation. Go over to my music. My music's really quiet. Turn this up a little bit. Oh, leave me alone, Pearson View. I'm taking the AZ900 um, cert for work. Seems pretty easy, but <laughs> that's what that was for. Hey, what up, Skippy? Good to have you here. All right, this phrase exploits misconfigurations to perform a combination of lateral movement and privilege escalation until we reach a suitable position to execute our goals as shown in the diagram below. This phase is usually combined with persistence to ensure that we can't lose the new position we gain, which the room on persistence just came out today. So I am behind. I'll be playing catch up for a little bit on stream, but this will be covered in the next room. It is also usually combined with additional enumeration since our new position might allow us to acquire additional information about the lay of the land. So you can see this, we have our initial recon, our initial compromise, we establish a foothold, we escalate privileges, and there's a cycle as we accomplish our different goals. We do internal recon, move lateral, maintain presence over and over again until we complete our mission. So our learning objectives. In this network, we will cover several methods that can be used to exploit AD misconfigurations. This is by no means a complete list as available methods are usually highly situational and dependent on the AD structure and environment. However, we will cover the following techniques for exploiting AD. AD delegation, force authentication relays, group policy objects or GPOs, targeting AD users, domain trust, and silver and golden tickets going Willy Wonka on them. If you are using the web-based attack box, you will be connected to the network automatically, blah, blah, blah. We are not using the attack box. I always encourage people to set up your own VM. It helps with learning and getting tools configured. You may have to restart the network server twice, blah, blah, blah. You should also take the time. Okay, okay, okay. We have our own. So if you're using Kali, this is where it walks through how to do it. So if we scroll up here, we just need to grab this IP of our DC. So it's the .83.101. So let's go here. We're gonna open up Network Manager, or Advanced Network Configuration. And then Skippy said, I love hacking, so I'm going to see you until you finish. Sweet. Good to have you, Skippy. And I always like to say, you may not have been here when I first said it, I'm, I'm a total noob in my opinion. So I'm, I'm learning right alongside you. And so you can watch me stumble through this and we can stumble through it together. But our first step is we need to set our DNS, which I don't remember what it is, but I can see it a little bit through my console. So 10.200.83.101, that's just the domain controller that we're setting our DC to. So we'll save that. Perfect. You have to restart it like that. And now if we pull this guy up, we should be able to just attest to make sure it's working by doing NS lookup on that guy. Hey, we are in luck. So we are on the network so far. So good. I have not broke anything. That's a good thing. Okay, so requesting your creds. To simulate an AD breach, you'll be provided with your first set of creds. Once your network and setup has been completed, navigate to here to request your credential pair. This is the same in each one of these rooms. Usually, of course, this would you'd get these after you first hack or do a phishing email, but we are already breached the network. Get creds. Who are we? Okay. We are Lewis. Louis Thornton, it looks like. So let's just G edit that and we'll save it as um, creds.txt. And we'll go like that. And I'm just gonna go like this. Boom. Not the cat creds. There we are. We have our username and our password. Pull this back up. Okay, this credential provides you RDP and SSH access to this little jump server. The THM work one can be seen as a jump hosted in the environment, simulate a foothold that you have achieved. You can use Remina or any other similar remote desktop client connect to this host or RDP. Remember to specify the domain when connecting for SSH access, you can do this. 
and I will want to do SSH access. I feel like RDP can just be a little bit buggy. So we can go ahead and copy this and go here. Actually, you know, before we do that, we need to grab those creds one more time. Okay. Now we can paste that. Our AD username is going to be Luis Thornton. Everything else looks good. We should be prompted for our password, which is ISLR3423. Okay, ISLR3423. There we go, I must've just typed it wrong. There we go, so we are logged into our jump box. I wonder if we just do a quick dir, see what we all got if we go to desktop. Do you have any cool flags? Nope. Okay. All right, let's pull this back up. I am ready to start my journey. That I am. Got some files to download, did it look like? Let's go ahead and download these task files on our VM. Just go down here. And we'll just throw them in our folder. I'm guessing they might be Bloodhound files or something along those lines. Gonna download for us. There we go. No, not open. That's not what I want to do. Come on, y'all. Download. Save. Thank you. And we'll just call this shell. Oh, maybe maybe it'd be more accurate to call it SSH. And if we go to our downloads folder. Oh, it is Bloodhound. I was right based on my guess. Home, Cali, try hack me, exploiting AD. We'll put it there and then we ourselves will go there as well. So we got our blood ho bloodhound file. We can unzip that beast. Actually, I don't think you need to unzip it. You upload it as a zip if I remember right. Oh well, we'll fix that later. All right, Active Directory can delegate permissions and privileges through a feature called permission delegation, not to be confused with Kerberos delegation that will be discussed in the next task. Just gonna check that, okay. Delegation is what makes AD so powerful in organizations. Imagine we work for an organization that has 50,000 employees. Since we care about security, we only have three users that have access to DA credentials. It would be impossible for those three users to field all requests from the users, such as resetting their passwords. Using delegation, we can delegate the permission to force change a user's password to the help desk team, meaning they now have a delegated privilege for this specific function. In principle, to keep delegation secure, the principle of least privilege should be followed. However, in large organizations, that is easier said than done. In this task, we will look at exploiting some delegation misconfigurations. Fun. Permission delegation. Permission delegation exploits are often referred to as ACL-based attacks. AD allows administrators to configure access controlled entities that populates discretionary access control lists, hence the name ACL based attacks. Almost any AD object can be secured with ACEs, which then describe the allowed and denied permissions that any other AD object has against the target object. However, if these ACEs are misconfigured, it may be possible for an attacker to exploit them. Let's look at our example again. If the IT support team were granted the force change password ACE over the domain users group, this would be considered insecure. Sure, they'd be able to reset the passwords of employees that forgot their passwords, but this misconfiguration would allow them to also reset the passwords of privileged privilege accounts, such as the accounts that are members of the domain admins group, essentially allowing for privilege escalation. A significant amount of ACEs can be misconfigured and the exploits for each vary. The Bloodhound documentation assists in explaining enumerated ACEs and how they can be exploited. However, we will look at a couple of notable ones here. Force change password. We have the ability to set the user's current password without knowing their current password, which explained above. Add members. We have the ability to add users, including our own account, groups or computers to the target group so we can make our user account an administrator. Generic all, we have complete control over the object, including the ability to change a user's password, register an SPN, or add an AD object to the target group. Generic right, 
We can update any non-protected parameters of our target object. This could allow us to, for example, update the script path parameter, which would cause a script to execute the next time the user logs on. Cool. Write owner, we have the ability to update the owner of the target object. We would make ourselves the owner, allowing us to gain additional permissions over the object. Write DACL, we have the ability to write new ACEs to the target object's DACL. We could, for example, write an ACE that grants our account full control over the target object. All extended rights, we have the ability to perform any action associated with extended AD rights against the target object. This includes, for example, the ability the force change a user's password. In order to exploit these ACEs, we will need a method to interact with AD to make these requests. The two best options for this are AD RSAT PowerShell commandlets or PowerSploit. Depending on the breach, the detection tools and the environment, one option may be stealthier. In this task, we will show both. Bloodhound. Sharp Hound has already been executed for you and attached as a task file. Start Bloodhound on the attack box or Cali machine and ingest the data. You are, however, welcome to rerun Sharp Hound yourself using the steps provided in the Numeron AD room. Note, if you get unable to connect to LDAP, verify your creds, make sure you have the domain set correctly. We provided a zip, zip of Sharp Hound data as a task file. On the attack box, you can find the zip file under there. First, we will need to start Neo4j. I wonder if I need to... So sometimes if Bloodhound doesn't work, I know like some the newer version of Bloodhound has some issues, so we may have to download another version of Bloodhound, but let's go ahead and try this first. And we're gonna throw this to the side, get Kali Linux pulled up on this side. Actually, we may not do that. I may make it big before we open Bloodhound because I remember it might kind of screw up the way it looks if you do it this way. But Neo4j console start. Unmesh argument. I think it's this Neo4j council. Probably in the attack box, this Neo4j council start. Yeah, I'm right. So let's let that be startup. The question, friends, is when I set my Neo4j password, because it requires you to set it, do I remember what I set it to? Probably not. So I may have to reset my password again. Um, yeah, we'll find out. Bloodhound, no, sandbox, because you don't want to get sand everywhere. What? I don't have Bloodhound? Hold up. It's just not in my... Well... Interesting. I assumed I had Bloodhound. I just used it. Let me check something. If we go to, was it lateral movement? Pivoting maybe? Oh. Let's go to enumeration. Do I have that on here? Oh, that's right. I may have broke my VM and I restarted it. I remade my my VM. That might be my issue. Because I'm not seeing where I did enumeration on this machine. Yeah, I, I bet I broke it and then I rebuilt it. Oh, well. Okay. I think default is Neo4j and Neo4j. So we need to change the creds first. So we can go to that in our web browser. Blah, blah, blah. Database, leave empty for default. Authentication type. So we'll use Neo4j and Neo4j and then it should prompt us to change our password. Okay, new password, we'll call it Neo4j1, very secure, Neo4j1. Next time I use Bloodhound, I'll forget what that is. That's okay. 
Okay, now that we are connected, now we should be able to go back to Bloodhound. And Neo4j1. Maybe if I save Passer, that'll work better for me. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and try to upload our data. And if we go over to home, nope, we're not, we don't want to be that. So let's go to, oh, not there. Home there, Cali. Try hack me, exploiting AD. And you can just use the zip. I didn't mean, well, I unpacked it. Then I realized since I unpacked it, you don't need to do that. You can just use the zip. At least you should be able to. Here's where it might fail. I know like the newer versions of Bloodhound sometimes don't like some of these JSON files. Oh, it looks like we're doing okay. Okay. Once the data is ingested. Shoot, I'm going to break it. Is it going to work? Yeah. I don't want to do it that way. Pull up Discord. Okay, we can clear finished. Let's pull up, try hack me right here. Okay, blah, 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 blah. The default, okay, if we search for our user account that was assigned to task one in Bloodhound, we see that we don't have a lot of permissions. We have the ability to RDP and the that, but this will provide us with low privilege access. Let's go ahead and do that. If we pull this back up, get our terminal pulled back up. And uh, looks like we got a few people online on Twitch. Hey, if you're watching on Twitch, go ahead and just share like why you're here, how you stumbled across this. Would love to love to hear from you. We'll, we'll learn all this stuff together. And as I've been telling people, and I'll repeat it again, I am no expert. The reason I'm doing this is I wanna learn. So I'm learning right alongside of you so you can watch me make silly mistakes so you don't have to. Um, I forgot what I was doing. Oh, cat Krebs. I just don't remember my account name. This one right here. So, let's open Bloodhound up. And if we go here, is it analysis? Can I just search for myself? I'm trying to remember all this. Nope. Okay. doesn't show any users. Interesting. If I go to analysis, what if I do this? Okay, so it is working. Just click through a few of these pre-built ones. No data returned from that. It's almost... It doesn't have all the data in here, it would seem like. What just happened? Let's exit this out. I clearly need to brush up on my uh, my bloodhound skills. I don't know what the heck I'm doing. I didn't have this many issues before. Let's glance at those files real quick. Maybe I missed something. So we have computers, we have, we do have users. It's gonna be a big file. I'm probably gonna break G edit. Oh well. What if we go like this? Home. What version of Bloodhound are you using? Amoeba Man. Yeah, so that's actually what I said if you're just joining. I said if we have issues, it may be I need a downgrade Bloodhound. I just installed Bloodhound, so I have the newest version of Bloodhound. I bet I have to downgrade, right? I, I think I can just download it and run it from a folder. I'm almost certain. That's probably my issue. Since I said that in the beginning, I, I might run into that. So Amoeba Man's the one who created this. So I'm gonna go and grab another version of Bloodhound and you should be able to just run it. Like you don't even have to install it. You can just run Bloodhound from a folder 
if my memory serves me correct. Let me remove all this extra junk that I did. Much better. Oh, shoot. Oh, why is it not searching? Okay, let's go ahead and see what we all got for binaries. Make sure no one's on here with me. And I wonder if even Sezen has what version of Bloodhound I should use. No. Yeah, just download version 4.0.1 should be the correct one. Newer seems to break on importing. Gotcha. That's a that's that's what I said. I should have followed my intuition when I first started. So for those of you on YouTube, what Amoeba Man said, yes, just download version 4.0.1 should be the correct one. Newer seems to break on importing the users.json file. And I know that because I ran to that issue, I think, on throwback. And it worked once I used an older version of Bloodhound. So let's go and see if we can grab that that older version of Bloodhound. So, blah, blah, blah. Let's go here. And he said to use 4.0.1. So, uh, these are all the newer ones. Let's go to here, 4.0.1. And we would be downloading, I believe. Oh, it is my five minute break, y'all. Well, I don't really feel like taking a five minute break, but we'll take one. <laughs> I'll be back in five minutes. I encourage you to get up, stretch out. It's good to take a break. I'll be back in five minutes.
Yo, yo, what's up everyone? Welcome back. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen out again. Hopefully you had a good five minute break. Let me go ahead and start my timer one more time. We'll do another 25 minutes. Here we go. Get Twitch pulled up. And that is a good question. Hunterbot said, Amoeba man, can you make a network without a walkthrough in the future? Sort of like a capstone of everything we learn on these networks. And I think Hunterbot, try hack me, has that plan. Um, oh yeah, Amoeba Man just answered that. So I'm just gonna read that answer for those of you on YouTube. He said, yeah, that's a project that is planned for the future, but it will not just be about AD. It will include other red team elements such as AV Vision as well. I'm taking a short break from AD after this, focusing on DevOps security, where we are now creating a network to simulate a DevOps pipeline for hacking, but that capsule network will be coming. Awesome. Man, all of that is exciting stuff. Okay. So for those of you who are following along, if you're running Kali Linux and you need to grab Bloodhound just to get the user.json file to import, you just have to go to the Bloodhound uh, GitHub and scroll down to the 4.0.1 and then go ahead and download it. Come on, Kali. Thank you. We'll save it. And we'll give it some time still downloading I'm gonna turn my music down a tad we'll see if twitch yells at me for my music this time last time they muted my audio like scrubs and let's move our bloodhound whoops we'll just move it to home home cali try hack me and we call this exploiting ad and we ourselves will move there as well All right, we got our zip file, we got Bloodhound. So if we unzip, unzip Bloodhound, like that. Give it a second. Okay. We should be able to remove our, our Bloodhound zip file now. And if we just CD to Bloodhound, we have the command there, so we have to go ahead and relaunch Neo4j because I think that closed. So just do that first, like that. Give that a second to start up. Get a drink of water. <clears throat> All right. Uh, let's go ahead and just name some of our tabs here and my music's still too loud in my ears sorry y'all one second i like the music just to be nice and quiet plus i think twitch likes that more too because then they don't yell at me for copyrighted music in the background all right so now we should just be able to bloodhound 
like that. And was it no sandbox? So far, so good. We saved our password to the Neo4j database, so it should log us in. Hey, okay. And now we have our data here. So let's just check to see. Still have zero users, but let's go ahead and just sort of re-import that, that specific one, which we, we would have to unzip it. So let's try that. If I go here, open a new tab, home Cali, try hack me, exploiting AD, and we'll just make a directory for blood. Well, let's just unzip it, who cares? Who cares, it looks messy. And then let's open up Bloodhound. Let's see if we can just upload that user.json file now to see if that does the trick for us. Not sure if it will or not, but in my head it works, which doesn't mean much. All right, users.json. No data in file. Well, that sucks. Maybe I need a different one. You can reimport the entire zip again as well. BH knows to check for existing objects. Okay, cool. Let's try that. So now I'm getting in invalid file type on containers and no data in file for users.json. Now I really broke it. Maybe I need to roll back to an even older version. Let's just try that. Let's try to... Yeah, I'm just gonna try to... Just for experimenting, whoops. Let's try an older version and I'm gonna go ahead and I am gonna remove these. So if we go like that, that should do the trick. And so, if I move Bloodhound, and we'll just call it dot four point zero point one like that. Can I do that? Okay, just to keep it clear. And now let's go back to the repository. And we don't need Azure Hound. We go all the way back to here. You know, let's let's just try this. Just just for testing and see what happens. Come on. Callie. We might extend our 25 minute break this time. Just <laughs> see if we can work our way through here. Give it a second. Okay, there's that new one. So if we unzip it. Dot zip. Okay. And let's remove the zip file just to keep it clean. And if we move Bloodhound and we'll call this one, it was three something, 3.0.5. We'll get it one of these times. And if we CD to that, do I need to restart Neo4j? I don't think so. has the other one open that's going to confuse me oh well we just won't navigate out of this till we upload the data so this is going to try to re-upload the data here grab our bloodhound.zip file let 
looks like it's freaking out a little bit, but if we go here and gosh, it's still have zero users. I click this one. Okay, I'm pretty sure I'm just doing something wrong. If I do this. Clear database, it's gonna re-upload it again. Okay, we'll get a one of these times, guys. Still zero users here. Let's clear this database. And let's also try to upload it here again. Oh, apology seems to be version 4.1.0. Oh, I gotcha. I just had the numbers mixed around there. 4.1.0, I'm on 4.0.1, I think. So if we scroll up, 4.1.0, that's the one that we need. Okay, cool. So let's clean this up a little bit and we'll remove Bloodhound like that. RF, try it that way. Okay. We'll get it, guys. Bloodhound 4.1.0. Assets. Let's go ahead and make sure I grab the right one. Oh. Amoeba Man says that was the version on the attack box that we used to create the zip with Neo4j 4.4.2. Okay, gotcha. All good. I'm I'm glad my one win from this is when I first did this, I said, hey, this might not work because I may have to use a different version of Bloodhound. So I'm learning. I'm counting that as a win. And then Amoeba Man said, hoping that works. Otherwise, you can execute Sharp Hound yourself as well. It's on the jump box. So, yeah, we'll figure out a way to make this work. This is, it's honestly good when things don't work right away because it, you can troubleshoot and learn. I even noticed that in my, my day job as well. I don't know why I call it my day job because this definitely isn't my night job. I definitely don't make any money by doing this. <laughs> so, it's, it's my day job and my only job. Um, let's go ahead and move Bloodhound. Now we'll go home, Cali, try hack me, exploiting AD. And we ourselves will move there. Okay. Unzip Bloodhound. And let's just remove bloodhound.zip. And then CD to Bloodhound. And we'll do Bloodhound. No, no sandbox. Okay. There we go. Okay. If we go here. Okay, good. There's nothing in the database. Sweet, I was gonna clear just to start from scratch. Let's go ahead and try to upload data. Try to grab that, hit open. 
Is it gonna work? Computers worked. Containers worked. Domains worked. GPOs worked. Come on, groups. I believe in you. Okay. There's probably a lot of groups, that's why it took some time. We're getting we're getting down to users. Drum roll. Zzz. Oh, it's doing it. We'll get back on track right here. Good deal. This this deserves a drink of water. Glad, Amoeba Man, you found that out. I would have just been uh, trying each version. I would have eventually gotten it, but <laughs> it would have taken me a while. It seems to be working. I just take some time over here. Everything uploaded from what I can see. So if we clear finished, should just be able to close this out. Um, whoops. Groups, users. Do I need to change my node? I don't have a node to select my friends. I'm just gonna click through some of these. So if I go to like, I don't know if it matters what domain I choose. Hey, this is starting to look a little more normal. Yeah, it looks like we have some users in here from what I can see. So if we do like Kerber Roastable accounts, yeah, this is, this is what it should look like. Our little puppy over there, our little bloodhound. Apparently I broke it with that query. Can I just skip it? What if I go like that? Can I skip to that query? Find shortest path to domain admins. Okay. Cool, cool. So I forgot what it was even asking us to do in the room. What are we supposed to do? If we search for our, oh, search for our user account. Okay, who was our user account again? Okay, cool. Um, let's. Shoot. Close that one. Rename this one Bloodhound. And open a new tab. I don't remember my account, to be honest. Oh, I should probably look here. SSH tab. We are Louis Thornton. So if we copy that, go to Bloodhound. There we are. So, you can see uh, a few different things here. Also press left control so it always loads node edges. Always showing node labels. Okay, cool. Um, password last change, last logon. Let's look at what we can look through here. Compromise, false. Yeah, you've been compromised. Password never expires, cannot be delegated. Extra properties, we have the distinguished name. Domain SID. Group membership. So we are members of domain users and internet access. Unrolled group membership, I suppose, are the ones that we are not in, right? They can kind of see how they're connected. First, we don't have any of this stuff. We have RDP privileges to that jump box. So I suppose one way that you could do movement is if you got onto a user and had, let's say we had access to another machine, right? An RDP access, we could do that or set up the weird proxy chains we did in the one the one room where we could use our attack box to proxy in through. That still doesn't make sense in my head, but it was cool. Okay, cool. Now that we glanced at it ourselves, let's look at what the room asked us to do. We have the ability to RDP. We saw that since the domain is tiered, our first step will be to compromise tier two infrastructure. We need to compromise a tier two admins group since this group has administrative privileges on all workstations. Let's ask Bloodhound if there's perhaps a road that we can follow to compromise this group. Add your user account as the start position and the tier two admins group as the end position. 
Okay. Let's give that a shot. So if we scroll up, gosh, my scroll never works in my virtual machine. And is it heat pathfinding? Oh, nope, nope, nope. That's not what I want to do. Tier to admin. There we go. So it's kind of like Google Maps, eh? It tells us the, the way we get there. So this is what we notice. We have our user right here. We're a member of domain users and domain users have generic right privilege, which let's, let's remind ourselves what that is. Generic right, we can update any non-protected parameters of our target object. This could allow us to, for example, update the script path parameter, which would cause a script to execute the next time a user logs in. So thinking ahead, if we have generic right to IT support, can we write some type of script that allows us to, to essentially put ourselves in this group or something with that group? Because once we get into that group, you can notice that we have the privilege to force change password. If we can get these rights right here, then we can compromise any one of these T2 admins accounts, which therefore puts us in the T2 admin group and we accomplish our first goal. That's how it looks in my head. Let's jump back to the machine and see if my thought process is close to what we're gonna do. Bloodhound shows us a very interesting path. It seems that there was a slight bit of permission delegation in this domain. An administrator has misconfigured the permission delegation of the IT support group by providing the domain user group with the ad members ACE. This means that any member of the domain user group, including our own account, can add accounts to the IT support group. Furthermore, Bloodhound shows that the IT support group has the force change password ACE for the tier two admin group members. This is not really a misconfiguration since tier two admins are not that sensitive, but it provides a very potent attack path when combined with the initial misconfigurations. Let's exploit it. Let's do it. And actually one thing I wanna show you guys that I discovered that kind of goes with this room and I added it to my notes. Um, if I go to Active Directory here, I found this attack map on LinkedIn and it looked really cool. I just wanna see how this kind of adds to this. You'll notice on this attack map, you kind of start with, with where we're at, right? So if we look at this, we have a user account. This is really laggy when I'm streaming. Oh my goodness, maybe this isn't gonna work. If I zoom in, we don't want NTLM relay. If I scroll up, we find hash. We have a valid username and we have a password, so we have credentials. And now look at this. This is talking about using Bloodhound right here. Enumerate ADCS, some stuff there. This is cool things. I'll have to look into this more. I just made sure I pulled into my nose, but it kind of breaks all this down in this cool little flow chart. So cool stuff. I don't know where I got it. If you want it, message me and I'll just send you the screenshot. <laughs> it was somewhere on LinkedIn that I, I ran across that. All right, let me jump back to what we were doing. I get, I get distracted easily if you can't tell. Okay. The first step in this attack path is to add our AD account to the IT support group. We will use the add AD group member PowerShell commandlet from the AD RSET tool set for this. Start PowerShell, either an RDP or SSH on the THM jump host and run the following command to add your account. Whoops. Let's do that. So we have our SSH session right here. Let's first open PowerShell. And if we paste that in, we're gonna go ahead and add our account num name here. So we are lewis.thornton. Hey, so now if we do um, something like net user louis.thornton domain, Look at that. If you look at our global group memberships, we are now a member of IT support, which means we should be able to change the password of any of those T2 admins, and then we have now compromised their account. We can verify the command used by using the get AD group member. That would be the proper way to do it in PowerShell. I use the old school CMD way. Either way, it shows us our group membership. If everything works, you should see your account as a member. 
Now that we're a member of the IT support group, we have inherited the force change password permission delegation over the tier two admins group. First, we need to identify the members of this group to select a target. We can use the get ad group member command that again to assist with this. And of course, we also can look at Bloodhound, right? Um, Bloodhound had all those members, but we'll do it this way as well. So you can see all of them there. And then if you look at Bloodhound, you can see them all there as well. Bloodhound gives a little cleaner of a look, but either way, it works. Let's open this back up. Make note of the username of one of these accounts. Since the network is shared, it might be best to select one further down in the list. We will use the set ad account art adr sat commandlet to force change the password. Okay, so let's go ahead and go like this, go like this. Let's make note of one of our accounts. So if we do if I click it, will it pull me up here? So let's do Leon Francis, Leon, the French dude. Let's steal his stuff. So we are, let me scroll back down. Looks like we're setting a variable called password using the cool convert to secure string. Oops. Oh no, I did that right. Secure string. And what should we call this password? How about password one, two, three, exclamation mark. Very secure as plain text force. So we're saved that as a variable called password. Now we're doing set ad account password identity. And then our ad account T2 Leon France, reset, new password. That is our timer going off, but let's just see if this goes through. Do I need a GP update or something? No, I wouldn't have to do that. I don't think so. System unauthorized, blah, 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 permission denied. Let's try this again. No, oh, case sensitivity shouldn't matter, I don't think. Just in case it does. I don't remember what his account was. Yeah, that's correct. So, access is denied. Let's just verify that we are in that group. Get, um, well, we should have shown up, honestly. But if we, what's the PowerShell command? Get ad group. Yeah, get ad group member, IT support members. And we are Lewis Thornton. Check the note. Now that we we can use a get ad group member to assist with this, make a note of the username since the network is shared. Oh, I see. If you get access to night error, <laughs> it's always good to read. Your permissions have not yet propagated through the domain. This can take up to 10 minutes. The best approach is to terminate your SSH or RDP session, take a quick break, and then re-authenticate and try again. You could also run GP update force, that was my thought, and then disconnect and reconnect, which in certain cases will cause the synchronization to happen happen faster. Okay, so that's the important of reading ahead. Um, let me just clear this out. So we are at our five minute break. So what we can do, so this can take up to 10 minutes. The best approach is terminate your SSH session, take a quick break, okay? Let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and take our five minute break and then we'll log back in and we'll see where things are at. So let me pull this up and I will be back in five minutes.
and we are back hey y'all before we jump back into it i want to share with you a little bit about discord i know there's a few of you new right now on twitch with me you may have been wondering during that break what the heck is this work smarter weekly accountability cult message that you have up <laughs> let me share with you real quick what that is I'm gonna share my screen. Here is our Discord. It started with just really me and Nate, who's the other streamer on this channel. We began meeting once a week to hold one another accountable as we study for the OSCP. Uh, eventually that grew from our Facebook chat. Jack Neely was a big part of it and he decided to turn it into Discord and it kind of blew up from there. So I think we're hitting maybe 200, maybe more than that members on Discord. What sets us apart is we have meetings every Monday evening at 7.30 p.m. Central Time, where we share two things. What did you accomplish this past week? And what are your specific learning goals this week? And then what we encourage people to do is to share those in the weekly goals thread, which is right here, so that you can look through your weekly goals and make sure you accomplish it and there's something about written goals, having them down, but it's just a cool place to hang out. I'm on here all the time. I am one of the admins on here, but hey, if you want to join this, uh, go ahead and just comment on Twitch. I'll post an invite link there if anyone's interested. Otherwise, if you're watching this after the fact on YouTube, if you look at the description of the video, you should be able to find an invite link there as well. All right. All that being said, advertising is over. Let me jump back to Twitch so I can monitor the chat. And let's try to SSH again and see if we have, have uh, if we were able to get into the IT support group properly. So if we cat our cres.txt, okay. I don't even remember the, whoops, whoops, whoops. I'm breaking stuff, y'all. Let's go ahead and SSH again into this beast. There we go. I just didn't remember the name of the domain stuff. So, okay, that worked, that worked really good. Grab our AD username. Lewis Thornton. Password is ISLR3423. All right. Now, we can go ahead and try to Reset that person's password. Oops. And if we real quick just check to make sure we are still in there, nothing like broke in the meantime. Like that, you can see we're in the IT support group. I should check the network time to make sure the network's not gonna reset on me or anything. Oh, eight minutes left. Okay, let's extend it. Network almost died. Good thing we checked that. And then we're gonna start my 25 minute timer. Get that going. Okay. Let's go ahead and try this again. We'll just type it out. I think it's good to type so we learn. Um, so let's clear this just to make it a little more clean. So we're gonna set up parameter or variable and convert to secure string we're gonna set our password, we'll call it password one, two, three, exclamation mark, cause that's secure as plain text. Same password I use for my bank account actually. And force. Okay, set AD account password identity. And our AD account was going to be what, Leon Francis or something like that. Yeah, let's just copy it there so we don't mess up his name. Copy that. Paste it there. Reset his new password. And we're gonna grab that variable. So it's password one, two, three. Hey! It worked that time. Uh, always read ahead if you're stuck. <laughs> There's a note right there if I would have just read a few more paragraphs down. If this step works, you should now be able to authenticate to THM work one using this target account. Let's go ahead and give that a shot. So I'd assume I can just log in here with that account with SSH access. Look at that. We did it. 
If this step works, you should now be able to blah, blah. You currently have admin access to the workstation. Congratulations, you have officially escalated your privileges to Tier 2 Administrator by exploiting permission delegations. Good job, guys. Which ace would allow you to update any non-protected parameter? Uh, I remember seeing that. I don't remember it. It would be the all extended rights. Right? To do anything we want. Nope. Update any non protect Oh, that's what we did. Any non-protected parameter. That was what was there, so it was generic right. And that's actually what our domain users had access to IT support, which is why we could add ourselves to that group. What does value the flag store on the desktop of the administrator user on THM1? Well, let's find out, shall we? Oh. Do I need to log into a different one? Was the value stored on the desktop of the administrator user on THM Work One? Hold up. Do I need to do a different account? Maybe. I'm on THM Work One, right? I am an administrator user. Well, we could try to steal a different account, I suppose. Oh, no, let's go here. Maybe this is what we need to do. Yeah, I don't know what I'm thinking in my head. There we go. Okay. I have some text to read through, so let's go ahead and make this big. Make this our main focus for a second. All right, next we will take a look at Kerberos delegation. When you talk about AD delegation, this is usually what is being discussed, not permission delegation. Kerberos delegation, the practical, and let's just, let's just pause here, and we can do a little bit of this legwork ourselves. If you remember, when we were looking at analysis, there was a list of all Kerberosable accounts. So, I have a feeling we might focus on this right here. Maybe the ticket granting ticket account, but probably the service account right here is my guess. Now, I haven't done this room yet, so we'll see if I'm close or if I'm way off. The practical use of Kerberos delegation is to enable an application to access resources hosted on a different server. An example of this would be a web server that needs to access a SQL database. Some say it's SQL, I'm calling it SQL hosted on the database server for the web application that is hosting. Without a delegation, we would probably use an AD service account and provide it with direct access to the database. When requests are made on the web application, the service account would be used to authenticate to the database and recover information. However, we can allow the service account to be delegated to the SQL server service. Once a user logs into our web application, the service account will request access to the database on behalf of that user. This means that the user would only be able to access data in the database that they have the relevant permissions for without having to provide any database privileges or permissions to the service account itself. Constrained versus unconstrained. There are two types of Kerberos delegation. In the original implementation of Kerberos delegation, unconstrained delegation was used, which is the least secure method. In essence, unconstrained delegation provides no limits to the delegation. In the background, if a user with trusted for a delegation flag set authenticates to a host with unconstrained delegation configured, a ticket granting ticket for that user account is generated and stored in memory so it can be used later if needed. Suppose an attacker can compromise a host that has unconstrained delegation enabled. In that case, it could attempt to force a privileged account to authenticate to the host, which would allow them to intercept the generated ticket granting ticket and impersonate the privileged service. If you want to see an example of the exploitation of unconstrained delegation, have a look here. Let's just look at this. I think that makes sense in my head. I'd encourage you to look that out. I'll probably, I'm actually going to leave that open. I'll probably look at it offline. To combat the security failings of unconstrained delegation, Microsoft introduced constrained delegation in 2003. Constrained delegation restricts what services an account can be delegated to, limiting exposure and if account is compromised. 
The following are examples of services that can be configured for delegation. HTTP, of course, web, CIFS, common internet file system for file sharing, LDAP, resetting the user's password, host for activities on the host, and MS SQL of the SQL service. All right. <clears throat> exploiting constrained delegation is usually more complex than exploiting unconstrained delegation since a delegated account can't just be used for everything. However, it can still be used for some powerful exploitation. An example of this would be if we were able to compromise an AD account that had constrained delegation configured. By knowing the plain text password or even just the NTLM hash of this account, we could generate a ticket granting ticket for this account, then use a ticket granting ticket to execute a ticket granting server request for any non-sensitive user account in order to access the service as that user. Imagine impersonating an account with access to a sensitive database, for example. Resource-based constrained delegation. So there are actually three types of Kerberos delegation, but this one deserves to be mentioned on its own. Introduced by Microsoft in 2012, the same year the world ended, if you guys remember, resource-based constrained delegation. Let's see if you guys get my thing. I don't remember what year it was supposed to end. I remember in 2012, um, end of world. There's a movie called it. Beyond 20, oh, yeah, that's right, it was the May of Prophecy, where everybody thought the world was going to end in 2012. Anyways, I told you I get distracted easily. All right, introduced by Microsoft in 2012, resource-based constrained delegation once again provided additional restrictions on Kerberos delegation for security. Resource-based constrained delegation, RBCD, changes the delegation model entirely. Instead of specifying which object can delegate to which service, the service now specifies which objects can delegate to it. Okay. Instead of specifying which object can delegate to the service. Okay, got it. I had to reread that twice. This allows the service owner to control who can access it. In our web application example, this means that instead of specifying that the web service account can delegate to the database server, we can now specify that on the database service that the web service account is allowed to delegate access to it. Let's say that we have a permission to configure RBCD for a service. This means we have the ability to set the MSDS allowed to act on behalf of other identity attribute for the AD object. We can populate this attribute with the details of an AD account that we have access to. To now gain access to the service, we can generate a ticket granting ticket for the account we control, which will allow us to interact with the service. If you want a detailed example of this, take a look here. I'm gonna open that for later, because I'm a little bit confused. Constrained delegation exploitation. We will exploit constrained delegation for this task. The first thing we need to do is enumerate available delegations. Let's use our new privilege user for the network couple of commands. For the, okay. We can use get net user command of the power exploit for this enumeration by running the following command. So if, of course, if you were attacking a box, you'd first have to get power view on there. It looks like Amoeba man nicely put it in the tools for us. And you know, we might as well, now that we're in our attack portion again, let's go like this. Let's give Kaya Linux a little more room. Let's scroll down. And if we do get net user trusted to authenticate. Okay, let's just glance at this real quick. See if we can understand what's going on before we even read through it. So, just looking over here. Okay, MSDS allowed to delegate. So we have THM server one, THM server, so we have HTTP WS man. So it looks like we have the power to do some delegation on this THM server one, try hack me, which is uh, maybe a web server. Let's look up here. THM server one right there. So we are on THM work one. So we might have the power to do some of this stuff to this THM server one. Okay. Kind of makes sense in my head a little bit. Okay, based on the output of this command, we can see that the service IS account can delegate. Okay, remember when I said that right there might be what we're exploiting. I was, I was, I was on track. 
can delegate the HTTP and WSMAN services on THM Server 1. You would think that this means we can only access websites on behalf of impersonated users. However, PowerShell Remoting uses the HTTP and WSMAN services as well. PowerShell Remoting is like an SSH essentially. The ideal option would be to impersonate tier 1 admin since this would provide us with admin access over THM Server 1. If you were to perform proper post exploitation enumeration of THM Work 1, you would find that there is a service on the host running as service IIS user. Since we have administrative access now, we can use this to dump LSA secrets, part of the Windows Registry Hive, where credentials are stored for features such as Windows services. So let's use Mimikatz to dump this. Okay, well let's use it. So if we go here, let's do dir. Okay, well it's gonna be messed up a little bit because of the way I have my screen set up, but you can see Mimikatz there. And we have, uh, let's see, do we need to go to x64, yeah. And we have mimicats.exe right there. So are we running with any flags? No, we're just running mimicats.exe. Okay. Whoops. Okay. And now we are going to do token. Don't we have to use privilege debug first? Maybe not. Let's just follow the steps here. Whoops. I don't know how I managed to do that. That was impressive. Okay, token ID, SID name, NT authority system. Cool, cool, cool. So LSA dump secrets. Okay. I see. So let's run. Th let me just make this big again so I can see it a little bit better. So we have, we did this, we were able to impersonate NT authority system there and then dump secrets here. And we have our domain and our syskey for THM work one. We have machine, default password, vag <laughs> vagrant. I remember that from my other video um, that me and Amoeba met made. It's best to do this from a user directory since you're going to drop files to disk using two tools. Oh, I got you. Okay, I see. I see, I see. Let's let's just go ahead because he said that if we exit out of that and let's go to our C yeah, C users. Who even am I? That's right. And we'll just go to our desktop. And now, let's go ahead and follow those commands again. It's just really to run Mimikast. I just don't remember the path. Whoops. Threw it on the wrong window, y'all. Okay. Let's just rerun Mimikast. We'll just redo this. I'm going to copy it this time. Okay. We got, I don't know what that was. Who's hanging out with me? Oh, hey. Okay, let's jump back to this. Okay, Mimikatz, let's do token elevate. I don't know if we have to do that command again or not. There we go, LSA dump secrets. Okay, and we, we see this service account right here and we see this password one at, I'm guessing that's gonna come come in handy here. So to run through the two commands, we have token elevate to dump the secrets in the registry hive, we need to impersonate the system user. And now let's say dump secrets, Mimicast interacts with the registry hive to pull the clear text passwords. And you can see we have one there. Now that we have access to the password associated with the service IIS account, which, let's make this big again. Service IES, it's this right here. Password one at, just want to make sure I've seen that properly. Whoops, did not want to do that. Windows just doesn't like me. Oh my gosh.
I swear I've used a computer before, guys. Maybe, maybe, maybe I've used a computer before. Maybe I haven't. It's, it's anybody's guess right here. Um, blah, blah, blah. Let's go back up here. Now that we have access to that, we can perform a Kerberos delegation attack. We will use a combination of Kikyo, don't know how to say that, and Mimikatz. You can use another window from Mimikatz, but make sure to exit out of Mimikatz after the token elevate command. Otherwise, the tickets will be loaded. Okay. Password one at. You guys think I can remember that? Here's what we're going to do. I, you'd be surprised that I forget while I'm on stream, so we're going to type it in Twitch so I can look over at Twitch. Um, let's exit. It said to exit after doing that, otherwise the tickets will be loaded in the wrong context later. We will use Kikio to generate our tickets and then use Mimikast to load those tickets into memory. So let's make some tickets. Let's start by generating tickets. Let's Let's do it. I'm just gonna copy that path. Kikio. Cool. We first need to generate a ticket grading ticket that can be used to generate tickets for the HTTP and WS man services. Okay. So let's give that a shot. TGT ask user. It's that service user that we we saw, which remember, saw this way back here that this was Kerberostable. Right? Domain. GA dot try hack me. Is it dot local? Yeah. Dot loc and password is gonna obviously not be redacted, that just means it was redacted. Okay. Make it work, ticket and file, okay. Parameters explain the user, the user who has constrained delegation permissions, right there, the domain of course, and our password. Now that we have the ticket granting ticket for the account that can perform delegation, we can forge ticket granting service requests for the account we want to impersonate. We need to perform this for both HTTP and WS man to allow us to create a PA session on THM server one. Oh my goodness. Let's look at this slowly and carefully. Um, ticket granting ticket, service IES. Okay, so that's, we got a ticket granting ticket and then we have the delegation right there, the user. We have the domain, ticket granting ticket, service ZA, hack me, locate Kirby, user, it looks like we're using Trevor Jones in this example, but I bet we should use somebody else because if there's anyone else on the box, they may have already done it. I mean, we can try this one first, but if it doesn't work, that's gonna be the reason. I don't feel like typing that out. So let's go like that. Looks like it worked. Parameters explained. That long thing is just the name of your ticket grant ticket file. Oh, I got it. <laughs> I suppose it would have told me right there. So that's just the name of our ticket grant ticket file. So our, our tags that we're using is take grant ticket file name there, obviously, user service. Okay. We provide the ticket grant ticket. Yep, the user we want to impersonate. We want T1, the service that we want to impersonate using delegation. Did I get that part on there? Yeah, I did. Okay, good. Run the command again, this time for the WS man service. Now that we have two ticket granting service tickets, we can use Mimikast to import them. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing, but for the WS man service. So if we if we copy this we do that and if, can I just change it to like that Let's give that a shot Shoot, I did it wrong. Of course I did. Let 
blah, blah, blah. What air col m Kerberos as one curb load col m file data means nothing to me. Let's look back at what we did wrong. Oh, do I have to go back and do this? I have to do this first. Yeah, I just got ahead of myself. So if we do the WS man one, which I didn't even look at the password for that. Oh, it should still be service IIS. Oh, okay. the TTG file stays the same. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you, move a man. So if we change our service Let's see, TGG file stays the same, should still be. So let's go ahead and just recopy that up here. Uh, here we go. We recopy this. And he said, TGG file stays the same. So it does. So the only thing we're updating is that right there, I believe then. Okay, cool. Cool, cool. Run the command of this time. Now, blah, blah. We can use Mimikatz to import them. So now we're going to jump over to Mimikatz. I'm assuming I'm good to exit this now. So now if we run C tools, whoops, Mimikatz, shrunk x64 if my memory serves me right mimicats.exe yeah look at that let's go like this again i really wish i could somehow stream two monitors and make my life a lot easier okay so now i always get lost where i'm at now that we have the tick grant ticket for the account that can perform delegation we can forge tgu we already did that Mimikatz, here's where we need to do privilege debug. Privilege, I always spell that wrong for some reason. Okay. You can type dir to see your ticket files and I see you copy these someplace else like using another host. Okay, cool. I obviously can't do it when I'm in Mimikatz, but if I got out of Mimikatz, maybe let's just do that. Let's just see them. So there's our tickets. You guys can see those on there. Very cool. Okay, Kerberos, PTT. Um, I need to type all that out. My five minute timer just went off, I think, all's like it's just screwed up because i have it minimized here but you have to type this whole thing out obviously to grab the right ticket but it's time for a five minute break y'all so let's go ahead and take a five minute break and i'll be back in five minutes i'll be right
Hey, hey, hopefully you had a good five minute break. I know I did. We are back. This is our last 25 minute session. I try to be done by midnight um, because I have a job <laughs> the next day. And so what I think we'll do is we'll finish out this section. And I know the next section is exploiting automated relays. And we might be at a good stopping point once we finish this up. So pick up where we left off. We just need to copy these commands. Whoops. You kind of see what we're doing. We're grabbing those tickets that we made. I don't know if I'm using the correct terminology there, but let's do that. Okay, so far so good. We're all doing this so we can do PowerShell remoting. Okay, you can exit Mimikat to run KList if you want to verify, which let's do that. All right, so Kalis, we have currently logged in. We have cash tickets. Trevor Jones, which is a T1 admin. We have the server there that we're gonna access and Trevor Jones as well. So yep, it would appear that it worked. And now we can go ahead and enter a PowerShell session. So we're gonna do a new PSS session and then we're gonna enter into the PSS session. Okay. Let's give that a shot. If you've never used this before, it's, it's a cool thing. I use it at work all the time. It's almost like an SSH client built into PowerShell. It'd be the best way I can describe it. Okay, so far so good. So if we just enter into that PSS session now. We are T1. Tier one admin, look at that. Which Kerberos delegation type allows for delegation of all services? Is the unconstrained or whatever I think, right? Of all services would be unconstrained delegation. It's the least secure method. I'm pretty sure that might be what the question is asking us. Which Kerberos delegation type allows a service to specify? That's the the resource our back resource based something, resource based constraint delegation. I was thinking of role based access control for some reason. Which constraint delegation service allows access to file systems of the system via delegation? Um, it's on the tip of my tongue, y'all. It's the CIFS, right? Pretty sure. What is the value of the flag stored in the desktop directory of the administrator user on THM server one? Whoops. just administrator that we need to go to. Constrained delegation can be very bad. Okay, let's just kind of glance at this real quick. Mission, we could be in a position, all Windows hosts. Okay, so it's just another another way we're gonna do it. I think this is probably a good stopping point. What I'm gonna do though, so I don't, I wonder if I'm gonna have to need this. I'm gonna glance through here to see if I'm gonna need those tickets that we created. Cause if I do, I'm gonna put them on my attack box. So I don't have to repeat my work from before, but I don't think we need to. Oh, we're seeing your face, shoot. Man, that's rough, y'all. Thank you, Amoeba Man. Uh, let's see, what did I do? Let me just back through my work. Just in case you're falling along, maybe you're stuck at some part. So all I did during that time, besides looking at my, my beautiful face, um, I just copy and pasted literally 
this PTT right there to grab these tickets to create them. Then I exited out of Mimikatz and I did K-List to verify that I did have uh, T1 Trevor Jones. And uh, after that, I just set up a PS session to get onto that server one. We did new and then enter into it. Who am I that I verified? And then I went and grabbed the flag. So sorry about that, guys. This is why I'm always trying to be done by midnight because then it start, I start getting sloppy <laughs> once we get close to midnight. And now what I'm doing is I'm just looking at this next step. And maybe, maybe Amoeba Man, if you're on here, you can tell me, do I need to uh, exit out of here, go back to where I have those tickets that I created? Should I put those on my Kali Linux machine to save time later or will I not have to reuse those? It doesn't look like I have to reuse them for this exploiting automated relays. It looks like it was just for that Kerberos delegation, which would make sense since they would all have to do with Kerberos. I don't think I'd have to reuse them for any of this. You are sadly going to have to re Oh, no matter what, I do have to recreate them. Shoot. Okay, that's fine. Good practice but not for automated relays. Okay, maybe for exploiting AD users. Do I have to remake them or can I save the ones I have? They will time out. Oh, because it's tied to the specific network instance I have. Okay, gotcha. Well, that's fine. So what I'll do, um, so for tomorrow night, guys, I'll be streaming again. I don't know if we'll finish this room tomorrow night or not, uh, but tomorrow night will be kind of a unique stream. I might go live a little bit later only because I'm going to reset some of this. Well, I won't have to reset this up because tomorrow night we'll start with that. And then if I get to the point where I have to remake them, we'll just do it together and we'll, we'll do the process twice. I think the more you do it, the more you learn. But what makes tomorrow night unique is I'll stream uh, up until about right now. And then I actually have to jump into my day job, which is then my night job. I have to perform some upgrades that have to happen after hours. And I'll be starting that at midnight for my job. So I'll be jumping over to my work desk right here and I'll be doing that to like two or three in the morning. So I'll have a long night tomorrow night, but I do still plan on streaming. So tomorrow night around 10 p.m. Central Time, I'm gonna jump back on Twitch and we will go for about two hours like we did now. And then I gotta jump to work. Um, so tomorrow night will be unique for me. Should be the same here. So we made it through uh, task three. <laughs> we did good. We were stuck for a little bit on Bloodhound. But we made it through task three. Tomorrow night, we'll see how far we get. But like I said, the goal is not to go fast, right? The goal is to learn. And I learned good stuff today. So hopefully you learned something as well. Hopefully you found this beneficial. If not, oh well, I guess watch Netflix or something. Um, but thank you for hanging out. I will catch you guys next time. Have an awesome night. Otherwise, I know for some of you it's morning. I know Amoeba Man is morning. Someone else said good morning. So if it's morning for you, have an awesome morning. I will catch you guys tomorrow evening.